a century in cricket is pretty easy, but scoring a life century is difficult. I found him to be uh, very generous and kind-hearted. A person uh, with a lot of discipline, but at the same time he has a very kind heart. It's like a coconut. Outside it's hard, but in, underneath there is that softness. My father has been uh, very devoted, uh, very caring. It's just unfortunate that uh, this great batsman, I didn't see him play. I didn't see him in action. Actually, whatever I am today in cricket field, it is because of Professor Devda. Nobody can possibly emulate Devda. 99 and 100 is a vast difference between the two, though they are very close to one another. So three digits means 100. In our old literature also, whenever a youngster saluted the elderly person, the elderly person, so, Jiveta Sarada Shatam, Sarada Shata, so, please live. I bless you that you live 100 years. In the history of Indian cricket, Pune is best known for a man who has scored many a century for our record books. The most distinctive of them all is the century he has completed in terms of his age. Yes, he is Professor D.B. Deodhar. There are many in India who play cricket, watch cricket and enjoy cricket. But there may not be many for whom cricket is a passion, a devotion and a way of life. Professor Deodhar is one of such great grand personalities. At the age of 14, so I was picked up by the Nutan Marathi for its shield team. So that was the first beginning. And next year, I had made such an improvement that I scored my first century in 1905 against a camp school. So that was the time I began to rise. I got a prize there. After that, my school days, when I passed my matriculation in 1908, I joined the Ferguson College here and in 1911, so we had a very good tussle there at Bombay and I was the leading player to win that particular match because I scored 57 on a rain-affected wicket. So that was observed by the selection committee of the Hindu Triangular Committee at Bombay and they picked me up for that in 1911 first to play for the Hindus in the All India uh, communal matches, there is a triangular, which was the most important thing. I scored my first century there in, in 1924 against the Parsi, where I scored 125 in the first inning, not out 60 in the second inning, and winning that match for the Hindus. Then my another century was against the Gilligan side. So I, as a, I was a leading player in the Hindu side in 1926. So when the Gilligan's team came here and played against All India, I was included in the All India side. But at that time there was no control board of India. Naturally, therefore, we could not be say called it was official test. But in that match against Gilligan, though there were say good players and good bowlers, I had scored 146 and we beat the Englishmen there. I remember when we were young people, we had two idols in Indian cricket. Uh, of course, late Colonel C.K. Naidu and uh, Devdhar. C.K. was a very polished man, very, very elegant, very well cut and possibly a showman. Devdhar was a very simple household man. Both of them used to score very tall scores. And if you see 1923, when Hindus are first won, quadrangulars. More runs have been scored of Devadar's bat than anybody's. Devadar was very quiet but he used to play his strokes and he used to get runs at such a fast pace that possibly no batsman can ever do that. That was Kaka, a wonderful player and a player born in himself. Nobody else can make a player like this. The dawn of Indian cricket, Professor Devadar is the grand old man and um, surprisingly enough, even after attending his century, he is still going strong and he has a very sharp memory. Professor Devda's style of batting was unorthodox. He used to stand 
practically erect, never used to bend, keeping the left foot a little outside the popping crease, with the toe of the left foot a little bit lifted, and used to open the full face of the bat. He had a pair of very supple and flexible wrists. Anything pitched on the off stump used to be swept by him to the boundary line. I remember a six hit by him in that memorable match in 1939 at the Pune club. Our first team went to England at the first time after the formation of the board of control. So I was at that time 32 and in order to say exclude me from the team, they had the excuse that I was 40 years old, too old. Why did they like to exclude you from there? So because there may be that I was the senior most player in India at that time. Because I had captained the Hindus for nearly three years, 29, 34 and 36. And I had won all the matches there. If I had been in the team, I would have automatically been the senior most given the captaincy. But how did you muster up courage to continue as a cricketer? I had the way to come forward again and show my merit. Right from the beginning when Ranji Trophy started in 1934, I was the skipper. And in the very first year, we met uh, Bombay. Next year also in Bombay, and we lost by a very brief, small margin of 20 or 25 runs. But in 1940 came, say, our say, say best days, golden age of uh, Ranji Trophy cricket for Maharashtra. And in two years, 1939, we beat the Western India states, who had defeated us in 1937-38. So we had, in a way, our revenge, and we beat them hollow by an innings and nearly 100 runs. In the 39, I scored 145 not out. And we, other matches also that followed that year, we won all, and for the first time, we won the Ranji Trophy in 1939. Next year also, we repeated the performance. We beat in the first match, Bombay, at the Pune club. So it was a glorious uh, say, match for us because we had scored 675, the highest of our score there. And uh, my score contribution was 247. In the year 1939-40, he was the responsible man for winning the Ranji Trophy twice in succession. He molded his team. It was a very young side. We were very young at that time. We were hardly 23 to 25, while professor was about 50 years of age. The thing was, we had a great respect in that way, as a captain as well as a player. He was uh, really an intellectual captain on the cricket ground. And uh, he was a very cool-minded, you see. Never upset himself. But on the contrary, he would uh, encourage youngsters to do his best for the side. How did you find him as a strategist? Strategy, he used to be very keen in winning and encouraging our youngsters. Um, I remember one thing. Uh, we played against uh, Western India at Rajkot on a tough, uh, I mean, on a matting wicket. Uh, Western India scored uh, 450 runs. And when we started, we lost three wickets for 103 utterances. Then myself and Nagasoni were batting together. He said, uh, um, Ranga and Hazare, I am sure uh, you will carry the remaining runs. The, he showed the confidence in us. And to your surprise, Sony scored double century. 
and I scored 168. Not out, both of them not out. And we won the match. I respect him because I never seen such a captain in my life. I played against so many captains. Though I captain myself, I captain in the 49. After his retirement, I captain the side for three years. But he was a genius. He never used to grumble or anything uh, if we make some mistakes. But he would just let it go, you see, and on the contrary, he will try to encourage the same thing with CK also. But discipline was very important. And uh, uh, fitness of the player, they were very particular. Even after crossing the well-earned century in age, Devdar, in his spirit and at heart, is comparable to anyone half his age. Gifted with an alert mind, he can recall facts and figures of long past as if coming out of a computer. At Deccan Jimkhana, a spacious stadium in the heart of Pune, he has created a trust. Among its multifarious activities, cricket coaching for his schoolboys is an ongoing affair and under his very personal supervision. Born on 14th January 1892, Professor D.B. Devdhar spent most of his time, energy and resources for the cause of cricket. Earlier as a player and later as a selector, administrator and promoter of the game. He also had short spells as an empire and press reporter. Even after calling it a day from active cricket, at the ripe age of 54, Devdar has kept himself fully occupied. From Anand Gaon, a nearby small town of his birth, he shifted to Pune for his studies and life thereafter. After completing his education, he had a long stint as a professor of Sanskrit. He touched great heights in many ways and in many fields, but all through he has remained a follower of simple living and high thinking. A strict vegetarian and disciplinarian, Professor Devdhar always loved frugal meals and simple habits. Taking contagion from him, his son and daughters also excelled in sports. My father, he himself is a very good cricketer, but besides that, he uh, was determined to give his children all the opportunity of playing sports. And I think um, he was, uh, I don't know how, but he was very sure that his children were going to play. And that's why he purchased a plot in the near vicinity of P.O.S. Jimkhana, so that his children should have all the opportunity of playing games. Well, I played um, badminton since the age of uh, 10. I started playing at the age of 10, and I won junior championships at the age of 12. And later, I have won uh, national and state level championships also. And I was selected to represent Uber Cup uh, in uh, 1956 uh, and 60s. Well, uh, he has been a very devoted, caring uh, father. He tried to inculcate the spirit of discipline in his children in the context of sports as well as uh, studies as well as our uh, daily life. 
did you not find him very strict in life? Uh, you see, he was strict, but uh, he used to be away playing <laughs> so much that uh, the uh, actual business of disciplining us was left to our mother. He's perhaps uh, uh, the only cricketer who has lived so long, who has completed a century. Uh, not only me, but I think present-day cricketers also should uh, take him as an idol. Basically, because living so long, uh, it's a discipline what is matter. I had a, a slight uh, memory of uh, him uh, giving me a little bit of tips uh, when I had gone to play in Pune uh, for, the, for my college team. We were playing at uh, PYC Crown, and as usual, Professor Devder would not miss any match. And he saw me playing there. I was playing all kind of strokes, uh, and uh, not a ball I could defend those days because uh, having young blood. So I was going great guns, and I thought, you know, I was something like Vivian Richard or whatnot. And uh, when I went back to the dressing after getting a hundred, I got a call from uh, Professor Theodore. He wanted to see me, and he called me and uh, said, uh, "Ajit, uh, how long you want to play?" I said, oh, actually, as long as I can uh, play, and I would love to play for my country. Uh, so if that is the case, then you've got to choose each and every ball uh, when you try to hit. You can't hit each and every ball. He must have been a great uh, cricketer, great batsman. He's uh, scored very heavily in the national tournament. In 1944, Navadagar team had been to Pune, and Navadagar had beaten us previously. But that time, I scored a century in each innings. In the first inning, 105, and in the second inning, 141. So a century in innings was where there are about seven or eight players in India have done that. So I got that honor. And beyond that, in 1946, was another say, feather in my cap. So because that year, the control board, first of all, started Inter group matches, inter, say inter zone. Later on, it was named after Dulip, Dulip Trophy. But that time, Dulip was alive, so it was say, inter zone matches. And a south zone was had only three teams because Kerala was not formed as a team there. So, so they put Maharashtra there in the south, and I was put in charge. I was the captain of the Maharashtra, I mean south zone. And we were pitted in the first round against Star City Bombay, I mean West Zone. The West Zone was very strong at that time. Vijay Merchant, Vijay Hazare, Vinu Mankar, Phadkar, then Naragnekar, Ibrahim, so, uh, Gul Muhammad. So all these were stars. I scored 83 runs in the first inning by going out to Amir Eli and so on and hitting him three or four, four zero runs. And in the second inning, where our team was collapsing, I scored again 60 runs. So both the innings together, I contributed 143 runs together. And they, we took them out, uh, Marchand, Hazare, and so on, uh, for about uh, 204 runs. If you say Maharashtra cricket, Devudar's name has to be there. It is a synonymous thing as far as Maharashtra cricket is concerned. Like uh, if you say 10,000 runs, it is Sunil Gavaskar, automatically it comes to. If you say Himalaya, it's dancing. It's just like it is Maharashtra cricket, then Devdar has to come. I think he has done tremendous things for Maharashtra and he's still doing it. He, he has a genuine love for this game and he's still wanting Maharashtra to perform well. He said, actually, I will give more, more credit because the setbacks he has experienced in his life, with all these setbacks, he still stood and stood firm and not gave up the cricket. So that's why I call him a great sportsman. Because that's the basic quality of a sportsman, that you should digest defeat as well as the success with same ease and grace. One day we finished our uh, practice a bit early. So professor was watching us. We were dressed up and we were about to go home. He just picked up the bat and he said, come on boys, stand in the queue. So we all stood. And at that age, I think that time he must have been about 60 odd. And he gave us the 
catches. And the ball was coming like a bullet at that age. So I can, I could just imagine that uh, what type of cricketer he must have been. Tremendous person. During his life, Professor Devdhar received numerous awards, including Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri. I was always the opinion that you are all children of nature. Nature takes you. And if you follow nature, nature helps you. It was proved uh, when um, uh, he used to play uh, first class cricket and the running between the wickets that he used to do would have put to shame any youngster. He was so quick. Uh, he was a professor of Sanskrit, came from a good background. So therefore it was um, always a delight to meet him and to spend some time with him and discuss cricket with him and without losing his temper. Professor Devdhar probably is the only sportsman in the world. That's what late Vijay Merchant said because in 1974, the Maharashtra Cricket Association presented him with rupees 74,000 and Professor Devdhar added some of his own and created a Devdhar Trust. The Devdhar Trust is created to give youngsters a chance to practice on a ground like this. And many of the present day Ranji Trophy cricketers have taken advantage of this trust. He's very active, his memory is very sharp, and he takes keen interest even at this age in cricket. He watched the World Cup on TV and was very critical the way our team scored. However, even at this age, as I said, he has not forgotten the love for the game that made him the great man that he is today. Vasab, uh, are you in favor of one day cricket? Yes, I am violently in favor of one day Because right from a young age, we wanted to embrace my cricket stance also, was erect. So that the moment you feel that it is a half volley or a slightly over pitch ball, you must jump out and hit the ball as you like to recover or to be long off. So there should be on no account leaving the balls as they do often. So when the ball is outside, maybe say a bit rising ball, but you must cut it. Do you think spin has still a role to play? So slow bowlers ought to be given more say practice, more advantage. So it is not only the fast bowlers. So in India now the fast bowlers are disappearing. Only Kapil Dev is there, but he also now after 30, 30, 32 or 33, he will be on the decline and will be short of. But if you get good spinners, provided they have accuracy, a short spin bowler must be very accurate, bowl on the stumps and have a googly, as Amir Ilahi or C.S. Naidu, so they had, uh, so that type of bowling is required. Professor, now my last question. <laughs> what do you think is the future of Indian cricket? Indian cricket, you see, is going through a period because the professionalism has coming in. No good first class press cricketer is an amateur in the old days. In the days when Hazare or Vijay Merchant were playing, they hardly got two or three hundred thousand rupees when they go outside on a tour to maintain their family and so on. But now, every test cricket is a millionaire. So, they get so many prizes, so many invitations, they are turned into heroes. Like. But the danger also is there. Too much money, oftentimes, is dangerous because it goes into the head. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <laughs>